This is Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Hello, I'm Peter Anthony Holder. Welcome to this edition of Your Health. October 15th is Global Hand Washing Day. Now, washing our hands is something we do often several times a day, but many of us might take the importance of it for granted. To share information on its importance, we are joined by Adila Zahir, who is the Chief of Service in Infection Prevention and Control at the CUSE West Central Montreal. Adila, we know for medical purposes it's very important to wash your hands regularly, and we'll get to that in a moment, but what is the importance of washing your hands in everyday life? Well, you know, hand hygiene has been shown to reduce the number of infections and the spread of microorganisms, whether you're in the hospital, schools, offices, and, and homes. Uh, according to the National Institute of Health and uh, according to the World Health Organization, the WHO, the CDC, which is the Center for Disease and Prevention, and many other reliable health references, the best strategy for combating the spread of microbes is for everyone to keep their hands clean. And is soap essential when washing hands and also uh, good disinfectants too? Uh, I mean, they're both as good. Uh, there are there are the two methods uh, that exist. Uh, so you can either wash your hands with soap and water, or you can clean them with uh, alcohol. Um, however, the technique, in fact, matters as well. So there is the mechanical friction. There is the, the way to reach uh, every single spot in your hands. Also, that matters. Uh, so and and then there are moments when you absolutely need to. Use Use soap and water to wash your hands, for example, when your hands are visibly soiled or after using the bathroom. Uh, so that's for everyday, base, everyday you know, routine. And in hospital setting, hand hygiene with soap and water is the recommended method after contact with certain patients or their environment if those patients are suspicious to have or of having spores producing microorganisms such as C. difficile. Can you wash your hands too much or use too much product like a Purell, for instance? No, not really. Uh, uh, if you're referring to the resistance or, or something like that, uh, in fact, there is no evidence of proof or proof that demonstrates link between overexposure to alcohol and drug resistance, for example. Bacteria and viruses, in fact, they do not develop resistance to alcohol hand sanitizers, but bacteria develop antibiotics resistance through frequent exposure to antibiotics. This overexposure encourages bacteria to evolve in a way to protect themselves. Unfortunately, the overuse of antibiotic that contribute, it, I mean, it, it is the overuse of antibiotic that contribute to the resistance, not the use of alcohol. In fact, the active ingredient in alcohol is ethyl alcohol, which, is, which acts in a complete different manner than antibiotics. Alcohol, in fact, kills germs within seconds by physically destroying the cell membrane and denaturating protein within the bacteria. And because of of this mechanism, because of the rapidness in the killing and the physical nature by which it acts, there is no mechanism by which the germs can become resistant. So also, uh, alcohol, once used, it evaporates from your hands quickly. And there is no residual left uh, in the skin, so the bacteria are never exposed to a low level of alcohol, so there is no opportunity for resistance. Now, we all know that if you have an open wound, you have to cover it to protect it. But what if you have just slight abrasions, you know, simple cuts um, around the nail cuticle or something like that? Is there a problem with using disinfectant to clean constantly in an area which is, is somewhat open, for instance? Well, it depends on the cut. And uh, what if you're talking about uh, it's going to get worse, I don't think so. But some people do have dry skin. But the good news is, in fact, the alcohol uh, has the, the product, at least we have in the hospital and may, maybe other products in, in public areas or like Pharmapri and, and, uh, and John Cotu and all those uh, pharmacies, uh, I'm pretty sure they have emollient in them, which is... Uh, prevent hands from uh, becoming dry. In fact, it's even better than soap, than a lot of kind of of soap that are available. So 
if depends if the cut is very big and if the cut it's really need to be covered and all that then yes we need to protect the cut uh, if the cut is just uh, um, from dry skin, then it's not really the alcohol. In fact, you need to maintain uh, a hydrated skin by using other um, other uh, solutions, just like creams and and uh, and uh, probably uh, you know prevent uh, using hot water and uh, and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about simple things like the the everyday office paper cut, for instance. No, no. Paper cut, uh, in fact, that's what I would use. If I have a paper cut, I would use alcohol to disinfect it, for, for example. So I'm not worried at all about that. If now there is a, a cut, uh, I would probably, if I'm a, a nurse and I have a cut on my finger uh, that is not covered, I would, uh, it's in my, uh, to prevent uh, transmission of anything that can get transmitted by blood, for example, I should wear gloves to protect others. Now, obviously, it's very important to teach children the proper hand hygiene. Do you have any tips for giving, uh, for getting kids, rather, in the proper habit of washing their hands properly? Absolutely. I think uh, already there is a big, huge difference between our generation and uh, and the generation that is coming. I think people and kids are more aware of hand hygiene, uh, but I think what's lacking is in schools. Uh, myself, personally, I had given uh, many lectures in uh, elementary schools where my daughter uh, used to go to, and uh, teachers found it very, very helpful, even for teachers themselves. So I think if there is something we can uh, encourage and we can implement as different is to introduce this uh, learning curve to their curriculum and to invite specialists uh, to talk to the kids about the importance of hand hygiene on uh, every single uh, elementary school. And I would imagine, as I said earlier, that it's uh, very important in a hospital environment uh, that washing your hands is even more important. Absolutely, because you know what? The challenge in the hospitals is the overexposure to antibiotics because we all know when you're sick, the chances is that you may need antibiotics. And then the overexposure to antibiotics contribute to drug resistance because it's encouraged bacteria to evolve in a way to protect themselves. Infections caused by superbug, for example, which are bacteria that are resistant to many antibiotics, are becoming a major public health concern, these, uh, because in fact, these infections cannot be treated with traditional antibiotics. So hand hygiene has been shown to reduce the number of infection in hospitals. And of course, if you have the fewer infection you, you have, the better it is because fewer infection means fewer antibiotics prescrip- uh, prescriptions and in return, less superbugs. I think most of us are aware of when our hands get dirty, whether we're preparing food or we're going to the bathroom or we're doing work that involves getting dirty in any way, shape, or form. But for those who are just everyday, um, usual things uh, of a work day, how often should one be washing your hands besides the examples I just gave? Well, I think the, the, you, you name them, and I think the, the, the best thing is, you know, we all use, uh, I mean, most of us use public transportation. So the minute I arrive home, the first thing to do is to wash my hands, for example. The other thing to prevent anything from happening, and besides washing fruit or food or something, you need to wash your hands before you eat, whether you go to a restaurant, whether you, you can always have that alcohol dispenser with you, or you can go to the bathroom in a restaurant and wash your hands so it is crucial to wash your hands before you eat and uh, once you arrive home and every time your hands are visibly soiled if you're working in 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 outside in in environment that is uh, that doesn't matter actually uh, you are in contact with the environment you are in contact with money money carry a lot of germs in it you're in your uh, office in your computer i'm sure your uh, com- your computer or phone has a lot of germs in it so that's why your hands has to be kept clean as much as possible of course, bacteria are there, our viruses are there. The best way is to break the chain of transmission just before you eat, for example. So that's basically it. That was Adila Zahir, the Chief of Service in Infection Prevention and Control for the CUS West Central Montreal. And that's it for this edition of Your Health.
Again, we'll remind you, if you missed any of our previous programs, you can find them archived on our website at podcast.cuswestcentral.ca. That's podcast.cuswestcentral.ca. Feel free to drop us a line if there is a topic or area of discussion that you'd like us to explore on future shows. I'm Peter Anthony Holder. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Join us next week for another edition of Your Health.